Many years ago, I made this ugly mess of a machine. The idea is you wind it up and it stores energy in the elastic bands. Then when you want to use the energy, you release the mechanism spinning the magnet core generating a small current, which you can visualize via the string of LEDs. Now, since then, a question has been gnawing at me. What happens if we scale this up massively? So instead of these elastic bands, we use some beefy slingshot rubber. And instead of these puny magnets, we use these massive neodymium monsters. And can we even make this machine useful for anything? Well, you know what? I just broke my old machine. Uh -oh. So let's find out. Now, there are many ways to store energy in rubber, which can act as a mechanical battery of sorts. You're probably already familiar with those old wind-up toys. Well, this was the first way I thought of storing energy in rubber bands. Twisting the bands allows us to store potential energy, which we can then either use for mechanical activities or power generated to translate into electrical energy. We can visualize this in action by chucking a chassis on this wind-up mechanism to turn it into a wind-up car. Gears can transmit power to the axle, and then with some wheels and a bit of winding, it runs for a few seconds. It's not terribly powerful, but it's a pretty fun proof of concept that illustrates how we can store energy. And in fact, with only a couple of elastic bands and a bit of winding, this car can run for a good 20 meters or so before running out of juice. Our question is, just how much energy can we store? And can we store enough in a rubber-powered battery generator for it to be in any way useful? Well, let's start with one potential mechanism, a lever that we can put under tension. Now, we'll need a hell of a lot of gearing up to get it to run for a while. Now, this is, I think, a 625 to 1 ratio, meaning we get uh, loads of spins per pull. So if we pull the lever back around 180 degrees, we probably get around 300 or something spins of the final output. Nah, it's probably weak as hell, but it'll have some good speed on it. So let's replace this red prop with some little neodymium magnets to make our generator. We can mount six of them on this hexagonal piece. And then I'll just lazily reuse this old coil of thin 38 gauge wire I wound years ago. It's a terribly inefficient design, but hopefully it'll allow us to generate a high frequency output, albeit very weak. When we release the lever, here we go. A smooth, but weak output. And with this approach, we get around 20 seconds of just enough output to dimly light up about 10 LEDs. Pathetic. So next, let's try another mechanism that could offer much more torque. Now this one's a little bit closer to my original design, but we're gonna use some much beefier magnets and thicker wire. So now with this cage around it, we can hopefully hold these monstrous magnets in place. Now, and speaking of magnets, there's a fun little project I've wanted to do with Katie for a while now. And thanks to Displate, the sponsor of this video, we've been able to. If you haven't heard of Displate, they're these beautiful metal posters designed to showcase your passions. They have over 2 million from every topic you can think of. And for us, we picked this stunning textured Hogwarts castle to satisfy Katie's obsession. And of course, I had to get this super cool original Lego patent. And a freaky face anatomy skull, because I studied neuroscience. And then together, we got this world map so we can track where we've been using some of these little magnets. Now, these posters come in all sizes and you can set them up in seconds. Stick on the sticker, or two if you get a big one, peel the sticky magnet, and slap it on the sticker, and then your poster pops right on. Beautiful. And of course you can swap out your display at any time by simply pulling it down and popping on another. They even have a type of plate called Textra that has this really cool relief pattern that makes the images pop out and come to life. And I've gotta say, I'm just delighted with the quality. I've really enjoyed doing this with Katie. So take a look over their stunning catalogue to see what resonates with you. And when you find something you love, hit my link in the description to unlock exclusive access to the best display deal before it's gone. A big thanks to Displate for sponsoring this video and allowing me to scale up my crazy contraptions. Alright Katie, where are we going next? <laughs> Ocean. Alright, now let's pop this monstrous magnet block into our generator core. Then we'll use some nice thick elastic bands to support the magnet core. Now, I'm suspending the magnet without a top axle for a reason I'll demonstrate in a second. With four elastics in place, we can get some nice torque when winding her up. However, my table is metal, which is attracting the magnets, making it hard for them to spin. So let's pop her on a wooden table. By the way, to give an idea of how powerful these magnets are, I'm swinging another pair of them about two feet away, 
and it's still able to get this magnet core, which is also under tension, to wiggle about. Pretty wild. So let's hope when we wind her up she's able to generate something a bit more real this time. Now the reason I'm not using an axle to support the magnet is because with this design, it severely restricts our ability to wind up the mechanism. Oh, it's about as far as I can get it. Yeah, much worse. Okay, then we'll chuck on a coil of much thicker wire to see if this can generate something a bit more useful. If I stick on this LED, we can see if we're able to hit 3 volts or over. Damn, yep, not bad. What if we take the breadboard from earlier with a bunch of LEDs on it? Hmm, also not bad. But it still only runs for about 5 seconds. So this got me thinking. What if we can use the elastic energy to act as a sort of rip cord, spinning a magnet core up to a good speed, and then just allowing it to freewheel? We'll make an anchor point here for our elastic bands. And uh, oh yeah, stupid magnetic table. Okay, back to the wooden table. Now, it does spin, but what if we use some of these metal Lego pieces with ball bearings built into them? Supporting the magnet core by these should allow it to spin much more freely. Let's see. Oh yeah, that's a ton better. To help us wind up the mechanism, we'll build a simple ratchet. Let's start with two elastic bands to see how it fares. We loop one end on the pin, and the other on the generator's axle. And then wind her up. Nice, it feels like there's some significant tension on it. When we press the button... Hey, now we're onto something. Now we know we can store some real energy using rubber. By the way, if you like these silly experiments with Lego and technology, please feel free to like or subscribe. Or you can check out my Patreon to see behind the scenes footage of how I make these contraptions. Let's try it out using another random coil of wire from my never ending magic box of wire coils. And let's try out that board of LEDs again. Okay, we'll start with one elastic band. Hey, this is a great start. Okay, cool. Let's try four. Uh oh. Now, four bands has way more tension on it. Oh, hell yeah, this design shows clear promise. But we are using a very inefficient coil design. So I designed this little contraption to allow me to wind a coil of wire that perfectly matches the shape of the magnet core. So here we go, winding the hundredth coil of the year. And now when we break apart the cage, we get a beautiful coil that should be much more efficient now that it lines up with the magnet core. I'd see this makes a difference. I'm using a coil with 200 turns of 26 gauge wire. And with these sliders we can position the coil as close to the magnet as possible. Yeah, perfect. Okay, we'll use our four bands again. And we'll start with just a single coil of this wire. Excellent. Does it work on a higher voltage spool of LED light strip? I believe this requires about 5 volts to run. Sweet! Then how about some of these noodly dudes? They're quite power hungry. Hmm, not bad. I just love how pretty these noodles are. Okay, let's add our second coil. It'll increase our resistance, but massively increase the voltage output. After tidying up our mess a little bit... Let's give this a little taste test. Ooh! Mmm, can't beat nature's voltmeter. Mmm! Mmm! We'll try with just a single band. Here it goes! Ah! Yeah, that's a hard note. Awesome. Well, I reckon we have enough voltage to drive some high voltage bulbs. Let's see if we can power this 12 volt bulb. Hmm, cool. It's only a brief pulse, but it does work. Now, I wonder, if we use this full bridge rectifier to turn our AC into DC, can we also store some energy in these capacitors? Let's try a single LED. Then perhaps we can capture more of the energy that might be going to waste. Ah, well, a bit disappointing. Perhaps what we really need is some serious rubber. Okay, here's what I came up with. 
we've got a meter of this thick slingshot rubber, which is wound back and forth over a series of pulleys to reduce the size of the contraption. In theory, we should be able to pull this over a significant distance to give us a reasonable runtime and make use of a lot of elastic potential energy. Once we're all set up, we can wind up this ratchet, storing a significant amount of potential energy. Now I'm just gonna wind it up a little bit for now. Now because we have a lot of torque, I'm gonna gear it up a bit. The final output should now be just over three times as fast as the winch. And even with just a bit of winding, it's looking promising. Then we'll need to house our magnet core. Now we'll stick it between this cage here, and then introduce it to the rubber energy storage thingy. Now we can wind it up and press the red lever to kick it off. Hmm, okay, not bad. So let's stick on some wire coils to turn it into a generator. We'll stick one on the top, and one on the bottom, and back to our wooden table. Let's have a wee lick. Mm. Mm. Okay. So can we power these noodly dudes for any significant period of time? Mm, it's not bad, I guess. But I was hoping for a longer runtime. I think the idea is solid, but my execution of the mechanism just isn't amazing. Perhaps worth revisiting later with an improved design. But for now, I have one final idea. What if we just use direct drive from the rubber to the magnets with no gearing? and we use some ridiculously oversized magnets running at a high speed. Now this arm here can host four of our massive magnets. Now comes the hard part, separating these absolute nightmares. Twisting these is hard enough, let alone trying to get them to slide. <sighs> Alright, well, I don't have a magnet guillotine, so I've got to resort to some other methods here. Alright, done. Okay, this should allow us to hold our magnets in place, but we've got to be super careful because we only get one chance at this. Okay, here it goes. Oh, God. Alright, that's one side done. Okay, another two. Okay, that's another two. Now the super dangerous part. Adding another pair, and I need to get the orientation correct. Okay, here we go. Okay, don't f***ing go anywhere. Super dangerous bit here. Okay. Well, that's permanent. I don't know what this weighs, but it's a lot. Well, now that we have our impressive but heavy magnet core, we need to build a powerful mechanism to drive it. We'll pull a loop of this rubber through here, and stick it onto these pins. Then if we pinch the rubber and hold it in place with these lift arms, they're not going anywhere. Then because this is going to be under significant tension, I'm going to use this strong aluminium axle from Metal Technic Parts. Hopefully this will keep the axle from twisting when under load. Then we just chuck all this stuff together to keep it secure. And hopefully I've built this thing strong enough to withstand what I'm going to be putting it through. Now we'll need to raise the mechanism to accommodate the large magnet core. And when I give this a twist, I can already feel quite a strong resistance here. Now it feels like this should be able to store quite a bit of energy. Now of course, to store this energy, we'll need a solid ratchet. We'll use another one of these gear wheels and a lift arm to allow movement in one direction. This red lever then will allow us to release the mechanism. Now once it's all held together and the ratchet is closed using an elastic band, we can push this lever to release the energy. And so far it seems to work well. Then we'll pass another metal axle through the magnet core and shove it into our ratchet and then introduce it to the rubber mechanism. 
Now to be honest, this all feels a bit over the top and I have no idea if it'll work. Now if you guys have any other ideas of how to store energy in elastic bands, let me know in the comments. Then we'll add a roof onto it to create a cage around the magnets. Then of course we'll need a robust handle to wind it up. Okay, I'm not going to wind it up too far, but I want to see if this actually works. Phew, it's obvious this thing is super heavy, but it does seem to build up to a reasonable speed. Magnets this large moving this fast likely have some decent energy behind them. So let's fashion a few mounts for our coils. And this time, we're going to use four coils. One on each side of the magnet. Now all four coils will be combined to produce a single output. So the resistance will be high, but it should produce a reasonable voltage, even at low speeds. Then I'll clean up the mess of my wires by wrapping them around some pins. Okay, we'll use this full bridge rectifier again to turn our AC into DC, and this time we'll try out a whole bunch of our noodly dudes. Let's see... It's kind of weird how silent it is. Well, these guys are quite power hungry, so I'm just happy I can light all of them. Now I wonder if we can smooth out the output to just one of them using some caps. Yeah, not hugely. These noodles draw down quite a bit of power, draining the caps quickly. Then what about our higher power bulbs? Oh, well, they light for about 6 to 8 seconds. Not bad. And what voltage are we getting? This little voltmeter draws down a little bit of power, but it'll give us an indicator of the peak voltage. And it looks like we're peaking at about 8.5 volts. Then just for funsies, what about this LED ribbon that I stuck around a Lego tower? <laughs> That's quite pretty. Also, if we remove the rubber band, this contraption serves quite well as a standard hand crank generator. It lights these guys really easily, and the flywheel effect keeps them going a little bit. Of course, the noodles work well, especially if we use this massive one fired capacitor to smooth out the output. Though, these guys do draw a lot of power quite quickly. Alright, don't try this at home. You could, of course, also try charging your phone. Charging! Though, without a voltage regulator, this is not smart checking our voltmeter, and it appears we can easily get just over 10 volts. So I'm not sure there's a huge amount of promise in storing energy using rubber bands, but I'm cautiously optimistic about experimenting with gravity. Let me know if you'd like me to try that out. Cheers, folks.